Interpret it how you wish. I'm interpreting it as I speak it. I understand you're totally protective of it, and I totally get it as a content creator myself, but those are the facts. F that sh If anyone has seen my Remington James videos, who to clarify, I am now friends with, you would know that I'm not too fond of someone stealing recipes or not giving credit where it's due. Well, today we will be talking about Jeremy Etier, who has over 3 million subscribers and a boatload of influence on those looking for exercise and nutrition information, which is why it was crucial that I made this video. I will be going over the information he has provided that leads up to the evidence of the strong arming tactics that he used to try and use someone else's original recipe. Without consent, of course. Quickly, who is Jeremy Etier? He is a YouTuber that has been posting videos from about 2014 up until now, and he has a NASM certification as well as a degree in kinesiology. I have a lot of respect that he has a degree in kinesiology as I have my bachelor's and master's in kinesiology as well. For those that don't have a kinesiology or exercise science degree, it is crucial that you read your literature and you really interpret data really well before you get your degree. This brings us to our next subject, misinformation. I love looking at the science and drawing my own conclusion from it, but far too often people draw their own conclusion just to fit a narrative which will get them a viral video or a viral post or whatever just so they can get views and subscribers. There are many good videos that Jeremy has put out with useful information, but in my opinion, one terrible video can trump 100 good videos. Last year, Jeremy put out several videos that were questionable at best to downright bad, which several influencers or YouTubers with good information refuted and posted their own videos showing what the correct information was. Let's start with a video where Jeremy says you should train smarter, not harder, in which who would respond but of course, the Greg Doucette himself. Beginners to train like pussies. Most people in the gym continue to train like pussies all the time. Look around the gym, watch everyone train, watch them. Most are not training hard. Most are going an RP of five. They're not even close to going hard. So what are my thoughts on this? Well, I actually want to make a video on this very soon. I actually posted it on my Instagram stories the other day because far too often I am in the gym and people do not put enough effort in, ever. You can tell that there's five, six, seven reps left in the tank and they're not pushing hard enough. And guess what happens? Then after they see this video, they're like, oh, maybe I'm even pushing too hard as it is. And then they go even less hard. So I did not like this video because it is very rare that people are going too hard and injuring their muscles too much, especially when you lay out your training program the right way and you have enough time to recover in between each training day. However, this is just one video, so I don't want to make a judgment too quickly. Let's move on to the next one. Jeremy goes over a study. I can't even keep a straight face. Jeremy goes over a study which he says after four weeks, your body gets used to cardio exercise and burns a ton of less calories because your muscles become more efficient. This is misinformed to the max and several YouTubers responded to this of course, including Greg Doucette. As you lose weight and do cardio more consistently, your body over time will start to burn less and less calories for the exact same cardio session. If you are held in a lab and forced to starve yourself on an 800 calorie diet and not allowed to exercise, you will burn less calories while flicking your dick at the end of a freaking piss. That's the video Jeremy could have made. That's the conclusion you can draw. And Sean Nalawani weighs in as well. 
What I'd recommend though, and what I personally started out with was just 10 minutes of incline walking every single day with just a low incline and a moderate pace to start out. Now, this initial level of cardio may not sound like much, but with all other variables held equal, it should enable you to start losing a bit of fat for the first few weeks. This cardio workout is not gonna do much of anything, and it's certainly not gonna be the primary driver of your fat loss. It's the diet that will be the main factor and that should be given the most attention. And I feel like this is something Jeremy would know because it's very basic information, so I just don't understand the train of thought here. Now, what are my thoughts on this one? Well, Greg pretty much dismantled this video in a two-part video series, which you should definitely check out if you haven't seen it before. I loved when Greg used to act like this in his videos, to be quite honest with you. But what happened? Jeremy came to the comment section, wrote out this long reply, said he was sorry, took down the video, and said that he will do better in the future. As I said earlier, everyone makes mistakes, so this is understandable. His apology seemed sincere, so at this point, it just seems like water is under the bridge. Let's go to the next video, which he redid from the previous video to get it correct. He must have got it right this time. Right? For instance, one 2010 paper measured how many calories subjects burned before they started a diet and cardio plan compared to afterwards, once they had lost around 10% of their initial body weight. What they found was that the number of calories they burned per minute during low intensity movements decreased by about 15% as a result of the increase in muscle efficiency they experienced from just getting more fit. Jeremy, it's not from becoming more fit. The study is on people who were not allowed to become more fit. They were forced to go into a strict diet and they lost a bunch of weight. They lost 10% of their body weight. And then they became more efficient in burning calories due to the loss in body weight. It had zero freaking correlation to improve fitness levels. Jeremy completely redid the video and still said it was because of muscle efficiency and not because the participants lost a bunch of weight during the study, which was ultimately the reason they are burning less calories. Let's put it like this. I go for a walk with my girlfriend. She's 120 pounds, I'm 200 pounds. We walk at the same speed, same amount of time. We come back. Who burned more calories? Me. I bur I'm 200 pounds, I'm 80 pounds more than her. So it makes sense that I burn more calories. Or to put it for myself, I'm 200 pounds, I go for a walk. I now weigh 180 pounds a month later, I go for that same walk. If I'm carrying around 200 pounds or I'm carrying around 180 pounds, which time am I gonna burn more calories? Of course, when I weigh more and have to carry more around, I'm going to burn more calories, not because I am now more muscularly efficient. This is three videos in a one month span that regurgitated information completely wrong, even when having the opportunity to completely redo a video. And in the same span of time, more plates, more dates, or Derek, did a video where he disagreed with Jeremy about protein before bed. And it looks like Jeremy misrepresented the information here once again. I already don't agree that you should be having a big protein meal before bed. Second thing he says is you should literally backload it to the point where you're having a giant protein meal before bed that's substantially bigger than all your other meals. That you want to also bias a little bit more of your daily protein towards this pre-sleep meal. In fact, research seems to agree with this. 20 grams of protein gives a near maximal increase and appears that you need at least 40 grams of protein to overnight get muscle protein synthesis. The same authors state that we cannot say whether it was due to timing or the fact that they got more total protein. Do you get it now? Jeremy's making up more spews for more views. Again, twisting the narrative of the research for a click worthy title that gets views. Now I look at trends much like the scientific literature. I'm not going to base one scientific study and say, this is the conclusion forever and for always. I take 
a bunch of information or a meta-analysis, a group of studies, and I look at them before deciding what I want to, my conclusion to come to. So it is very similar with people like Jeremy. I am not going to make my decision based off of one occurrence, one video, one mess up or whatever. I'm going to go over a timeline of events. We have now went over four videos in which deceptive information was given to the audience to try and show what he is saying is true. When in reality, the actual conclusion of the research didn't support what he was saying or the methods used were completely different to the conclusion that he was actually coming to. As time goes on, everyone forgets about it. A year goes by, Jeremy stops getting brought up. Everything seems to be on the straight and narrow until June of this year. This is where we get introduced to a fellow Instagram recipe creator, Low Cal Recipes 98, or of which many people call Boo, which I will be calling her Boo going forward. Very similar to the type of anabolic cookie dough that I made, she made a brownie recipe that used flour, diet soda, protein, and sweetener and she was the first to ever create this combination and she logged it all on her instagram it started to gain some notoriety and even several youtubers used it in their videos including will tennyson so i made two different brownies from two different followers so the first one here is from gabby it's called the ridiculous brownie this one looks more like an a brownie. brownie yeah, yeah. Damn, that's good. Now, just two mere weeks after I posted all of the Remington videos, Jeremy Etier DMs Boo in the DMs. Just wanted to reach out and say how much I love your brownie recipe, haha. -ha. Came across your page a couple months ago and have been testing, tweaking the brownie recipe based on your updates and stories too, smiley face. We're planning to include it or a close variation of it in one of our cookbooks for our members. We'll credit you, of course. Would you prefer a link to your Instagram? Also, we'd love to talk about collabs for some of the future recipes we're working on for Built With Science. Could definitely use a creative brain like yours and would be a lot of fun. Just let me know. Of course, Boo is extremely pumped to see even more people joining the ridiculous brownies gang. Speaking of extreme pumps, Gorilla Mode gives me the most extreme pumps every single time I am in the gym. And they just released a new flavor, Blackout Cherry, which will be on sale for the first 12 hours it's released. And with my code E4CM, you will get an additional 10% off your entire purchase. Back to Boo's Pump. Excited to potentially be in a book and also to have more people hop on the ridiculous brownies train, Boo doesn't think too much of it and quickly replies. Hey Jeremy, thanks for reaching out and a belated welcome to the ridiculous brownies gang, smiley face. Glad to hear you've been enjoying it too and playing with the recipe. It is truly so versatile, isn't it? Still blows my mind, I genuinely can't believe and still don't sometimes, that I'm the first person to have discovered the cocoa, protein, flour, sweetener, diet soda combination for brownies. I'm interested in what you're proposing and potential collaborations, but before we rush into anything, can you tell me a bit more about you and what your plans are for the cookbook? Would love to hear more about your story and vision to see how we can best work with and add value to each other. Yes, Jeremy replies, we have a general cookbook we're working on and have the brownies already in there, with your credit. But we want to talk about making another specific cookbook we'd work with you on. A dessert only one, for example. If you're interested, we can hop on a call sometime next week just to get acquainted and explore possibilities. Without asking for any type of permission, he just tells Boo that her recipe is in his cookbook and that she'll be credited. Of course, at this point, Boo is a little more apprehensive. Okay, hold up. Is this cookbook that uses my ridiculous brownies recipe or a variant of it going to be sold for a profit? Would also like to see that section first if possible. Please understand, and as you have seen from following for months, haha, that this has been 12 months of my life's work and never existed before I created it. So this recipe, in specifically amongst the hundreds that I've given for free, does mean a lot to me. I'd like for us to do this right. I'm sure you understand too as a content creator yourself. Smiley face. Ridiculous brownies are like my baby. And respectably so. It took me over three months to come up with my cookie dough recipe, so I completely 
understand where she's coming from. What's funny is when Greg messaged me, there was a stark difference in how Greg approached it versus how Jeremy approached it. Greg told me that he was thoroughly impressed and that he would not be able to come up with, come up with it himself. He then asked if he could potentially use it in the cookbook and there would be some sort of compensa compensation or if I would like to participate in a future cookbook with different recipes in which we would work out the compensation as well. Notice how he asked while Jeremy told. Major difference. Jeremy replies, totally get it and understand. It'll be part of a cookbook we'll be selling in a couple months or so, which has a compilation of 100 recipes we've worked on. The brownies are just one of them and is where you will be credited. I'm more than happy to send over the write-up we have once it's ready. Boo replies, great. Look forward to seeing it. Good to see that you're crediting your sources. It really is just good manners and common courtesy as creators or just as human beings, really, isn't it? smiling, crying face, happy face. I don't really understand this emoji. Especially if Remington and Will Tenney have taught us anything. Crying non-emoji face, XD. Also, what kind of compensation are you thinking of for all the work I put into create ridiculous brownies recipe? A one-time payment or a certain percent commission of proceeds, question mark smiling, blushing face. You figure if a person is going to feature this recipe in a paid cookbook, that the person they are featuring has some sort of payback, whether that be commission or whether that be a one-time payment for the recipe being used in the cookbook, right? Jeremy replies, ha ha, totally appreciate the work and thought you've put into it. And you will be receiving a ton of exposure and traffic from our large audience and tight community, just like the one you have, through the credits we'll be providing to you, who I'm sure will love the various other recipes you have up as well. At this point, Boo is irked, and understandably so. He's just like, oh, don't worry about it. You'll get credit. You know, we're not going to do anything else. But you'll get your credit, and it's already in there. But don't worry, like, we'll, we'll make sure that you have your credit. <laughs> Okay. Boo responds, let me get this straight. You and your brand profits off of other people's hard work without asking for their consent and pays them in exposure. Just want to be 100% clear. I'm not misunderstanding what you are saying. Smiley face. Of course, I don't know. I think it's 18 hours goes by. No response. Okay. So Boo follows up. Hi, Jeremy. Having reread our initial interactions when you first reached out, as well as how quickly you responded in mere minutes until any intention or mention an inquiry into how you compensate others for their time and work to which you have disappeared for 18 hours. I'll be honest and say that I'm starting to second guess your good intentions. I try not to make assumptions and prefer to just ask directly to avoid miscommunication though. So I'd like to clarify your intentions when you sent me the initial message of you love my brownie recipe, came across it a couple months ago, have been tweaking it since, and we plan to put it in our cookbook. Was your intention to ask for my consent to use my ridiculous brownie recipe in your cookbook for your personal profit? Or was it to tell me that you will be using my work and doing so regardless of whether I would like you to or not? Perhaps to cover your tracks if anyone ever calls you out. As much as I am starting to have my own doubts, I believe it is important to first give you the benefit of the doubt and not to jump to conclusions. I look forward to your reply. With everything Boo is replying and saying, I completely agree with. But this must just be a misunderstanding. I think from everything we've seen so far, we know the answer to that. Right? To get called out for crediting your idea in our book. To be clear, every single recipe out there has come from an origin. Every single idea for that matter has. People don't own these, unless patented and trademarked, of course. Yet, these are distributed and used by others in products without crediting the original source, which, for that matter, often eventually gets lost or forgotten. The soda brownie recipe and variations of it have been posted a lot of places without credit and to be honest, will continue to be the case. 
It just so happens that we happened to find the source of the idea and wanted to support you with a simple gesture, something we did not have to do. Interpret it how you wish. I'm interpreting it as I speak it. I understand you're totally protective of it, and I totally get it as a content creator myself. But those are the facts. Fuck that Shit. Hi, Jeremy. I'll respond to several concerning parts of your message and reiterate what you've previously said to highlight any inconsistencies. I will respond to two main portions. I will then explicitly let you know that I do not consent to you using my ridiculous brownie recipe in your cookbook to make a profit off of. First message, June 16th, 2021. I love your brownie recipe. We're planning to include it or a close variation of it. It will be based on your updates and stories. Most recent message, June 18th, two days later, using your idea in our cookbook. It just so happens that we happen to find the source of the idea. You know exactly what your source is. Crediting is not a favor, it is a basic courtesy and the bare minimum. Go fucking boo. Your message, Friday, June 18th. The soda, soda brownie recipe and variations of it has po been posted a lot of places without credit and to be honest, will continue to be the case. My response, bad behavior from other content creators does not excuse our own. Two wrongs do not make a right. This is not a matter of legality, but morals. Two, other creators making content about ridiculous brownies is very different from you literally taking it, putting it in your cookbook without asking for consent, and then selling it for a profit. Clarifications about the phrase calling out. I think you may mis misinterpreted my words. I didn't mean that you'd be called out for crediting someone for a recipe in your cookbook. Of course, that is the decent thing to do. Crediting our sources or wherever we can is great. I meant that if you chose the alternative not to credit, you might be called out if people recognized it, as you have probably seen an exercise for cheat meals video with Remington James that happened very recently. You've been following my story for months, so you've probably been well aware at how recognizable Ridiculous Brownies has been in the space. Literally, all of my followers have been trying their best to call out creators who have tried to pass it off as their own. They recognize that this behavior is not okay. Thus, you're reaching out of goodwill and offering to credit me to support you with a simple gesture, something we did not have to do, does seem suspicious. It reads more like you needed evidence to show your audience that you had contacted me and sought my permission for my ridiculous brownie recipe. I reiterate, from our previous exchanges, you had never disputed that this was my recipe until I showed signs that I may not want you to use it. Not my idea, my recipe. To my knowledge, I am the first to ever create the combination of cocoa, protein, flour, sweetener, and diet soda. I do not say this lightly as understand that many recipes can be very alike, but this has literally never existed before April 2020 when I created them. Nonetheless, I will not buy into your sneaky distraction tactic of debating whether we're original or not. That debate goes nowhere and we all know it. Ultimately, you have told me not asked, that you're going to use my recipe in your cookbook. You know your sources, you know from following or having followed me for months, in your own words, the hard work that has gone into it. At the end of the day, it comes down to morals. She then goes on to say, I do not consent to you having this in my cookbook or in your cookbook. I'm more than happy for you to share my original Ridiculous Brownies post with them instead of putting it behind a paywall before they can access it. If you'd like some ideas on how to do this right, you can see a good example of how this has already been done by Will Tennyson. He shout, shared, shouted out, and linked my Ridiculous Brownie recipe for his subscribers to find in his video. Also, I think you may have forgotten to reply to my only question. What was your intention of your first message? To ask for my consent or to tell me you were going to use my recipe for a profit regardless of whether I consented or not. I know I cannot and am not even going to try and control your actions, especially as a smaller and poorer creator compared to someone powerful like yourself with 3 million YouTube subscribers, the money, and a strong fan base. 
All I can do is communicate my thoughts as clearly as I can to you to make it explicit that I prefer you do not use my content and hard work for your profit. Whatever you choose to do from here on will just reveal what your true motives are. If you genuinely want your followers to join us in enjoying good, macro-friendly brownies and other recipes, if you believe in using your platform to lift up smaller creators who you, whom you believe are making valuable contributions in others' lives, or if your primary goal is to make profit for personal gain, even if it's at the expense of others, regardless of who, who you exploit. Blushing smiley face. Rooting for you to do the right thing and all the best in your future endeavors. Content, kind of smiling, don't really understand how to describe this emoji. This was June, I think, 18th or 19th, okay? Two months, radio silence, nothing, zilch. A zero, a nada. At this point, Boo makes an Instagram post about this, but does not name the creator. However, she says that he has more than a million followers. This leads people to believe, without proof of course, that it is Greg Doucette, even leading people that have a pretty good amount of following to say that it's him without any proof whatsoever. However, this post causes a lot of commotion and stirs up the pot and it just so happens that now Jeremy responds to Boo. Hi, although I did not follow up, just to be clear, we won't be using your ridiculous brownie recipe in our cookbook. In respect of you specifically stating that you would not like us to use it, even if credits were provided. As a content creator myself, I can respect that. If you reconsider, we can always consider to include it with credits to you and your community. Just let me know. Thank you. Now, although to some people, this might seem like, oh, it's all good. He said he's not going to use it. And he seems very polite in this follow-up message. I don't feel like that's the full story here. This is a matter of morals and integrity. Although legally, Boo would not have been able to sue Jeremy in court and win over having the ridiculous brownie recipe in his cookbook, it is most certainly morally wrong and would definitely not be using integrity if he did so. Yes, he told her he was going to use her recipe, but that's like me calling my friend and telling him, hey, I'm coming to your house, you have no option, versus being like, hey bro, is it cool if I come over right now? I wanna hang out. Major, major difference. For someone who is a kinesiologist, it is a major component of getting through school. And it's funny that he says it's a nice gesture for him to cite his sources and that he really didn't need to do it. If he didn't cite his scientific research in a paper that he was using in university, he would get an F. Just like if he didn't cite his sources for Boo's recipe and also didn't ask to put the recipe in his cookbook, which he didn't do. So I give Jeremy an F. What do I think? I think if there wasn't such an outpouring of love and backing up of Boo on these posts, that Jeremy still would have included this recipe in his cookbook and not given a damn. I think the amount of attention this was getting, as well as probably seeing what happened with all of the Remington videos a few months ago, that he backpedaled and he decided to say, oh no, I'm not gonna do that, and make it sound like he's coming off as the nice guy by saying, oh, I respect you and you saying that you don't want it in your cookbook. And what I am worried about going forward is that people like him will use smaller creators' recipes without citing their sources, especially if they don't have any voice or other people that will back them up. That is what I'm worried about because that is not fair. This isn't the first time that Jeremy's morals and integrity have been called into question. There were four instances just last year where he's putting up videos that are deceptive and misleading. And now leading up to this year where he seems like he's strong arming a smaller Instagram creator and saying, I'm going to use this recipe, whether you like it or not, you should be grateful for me even citing you in the first place. With the history of this behavior starting last year and leading up until now, sorry can only get you so far. He has said sorry, said that he will change his actions back in Greg's video in July of 2020, and now we are in 2021 and it seems like the same type of actions are still occurring. 
sorry can only get you so far. I really hope this opens more eyes to see what's really going on behind the scenes and that moving forward, we continue to support each other no matter how big or how small the creator. And let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this subject as well. But until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do see.